Tomatoes from Holland are ubiquitous in German supermarkets, whether in summer or winter. But how much nature and taste are actually in the Germans' favorite vegetable? I don't like them at all. They taste watery. I don't buy them. The Dutch tomatoes are all totally sprayed. That's why I prefer to eat German ones. Don't they all grow in greenhouses? That's a total waste of energy. I heard they don't grow in the ground, they grow on sponges. That's really disgusting. The reputation of the Dutch tomato couldn't be worse, but is it deserved? We head off to our Dutch neighbors to check if there's any truth in all the criticisms. After five hours of driving, it looks like we're getting close. Near The Hague, we find greenhouses, greenhouses and more greenhouses, as far as the eye can see. This is where it all begins, we are told. Let's go in and see for ourselves. Here, the hygiene regulations are especially strict. Any germs that are brought in could destroy all the young plants. For visitors, that means full body protective suits, brushing off their wrapped up feet and disinfecting their hands despite wearing gloves. Here, we've arranged to meet the tomato producer Jos van Mill. This is where he buys the tomato plants for his greenhouses. They are grown from these seeds and they are worth a fortune. The reason? Plant seeds are developed in laboratories over many years. We invest a lot of money. This little bit costs more than three, four, five thousand euros. One kilogram of tomato seeds costs more than one kilogram of gold. That's more than 80,000 euros for one kilo. And 150,000 euros if Jos wants seeds for a tomato variety exclusively for his farm. Before planting, the seeds are covered with a lime coating, making them easier to process. This machine plants the precious white globules in, no, not sponges, but rock wool, a mixture of shredded waste glass and stone. It retains water better than soil. The employee replaces any seed globules the machine has left out. Water and a little nutrient solution are added. The sand serves a water reservoir. In these germination rooms, the seeds do what the name implies. They germinate in a warm and humid environment. This machine sorts the tender plantlets by size. For this, they go past this camera, are measured at lightning speed and sent onto the right track. The more equal the plants, the better, we are told. Because then all the tomatoes will be ripe at the same time. None of this has anything to do with nature anymore. These plants are more of a high-tech product. At this station, they are tuned further, in the so-called grafting process. For this, particularly strong, disease-resistant rootstocks are required. The employees then clip a particularly high-yielding plant top or scion to it. This technique combines the optimal characteristics of health and abundant harvest. This brand new plant grafting machine does all this automatically. It's a prototype, the first of its kind in the world. One more final check. Then tops and bottoms have time to grow together into one tomato plant under these plastic sheets. After about a fortnight, they look like this, just a little bigger, and Jos can take them to his farm. This is where our plants are, in this greenhouse. This is about 50,000 plants and they cost about 150,000 euros. With them, we can plant about 20 to 25% of our farm and start production from here. We accompany Jos to his farm and have to change clothes, again. Here too, it's to prevent us from bringing in germs. The plants your sport and cultivates here cannot form seeds themselves. This is how seed producers make sure that young plant farms and tomato producers like yours always have to buy new seeds. A huge business. 
Yoss's father and grandfather already grew tomatoes. His company sells 18 million per week all year round and most of it goes to Germany. Jos tries to grow his tomatoes as naturally and environmentally friendly as possible. It starts right here. The plants grow on shredded coconut fiber and not on sponges. Coconut stores water much better than soil. You only need four liters to produce one kilo of tomatoes. Outdoors, using soil, it takes 60 liters of water to produce one kilo. Irrigation is done exclusively with rainwater. It flows from the roofs of the greenhouses directly into a large basin and is collected there. It's then pumped to the plants in the greenhouses through the wide pipes. Excess water flows back. Nothing is wasted. For these flowers to become tomatoes, they have to be pollinated. That's the job of the bumblebees that live all over everywhere in these greenhouses. We wonder how they actually survive when there is supposedly so much spraying going on here. We don't spray here anymore. We use insects. We need them to work against the pests. And so these tomatoes can grow without chemicals. The ubiquitous aphids, for example, are kept in check with this black insect called a gall mitch. On these cards, there are tiny insect eggs. Scorpion wasps soon hatch from them, and they too are ecological pest exterminators. And what are all the yellow ribbons for? They are used to combat the so-called white fly. For Jos, its name in German is a tongue twister. In the winter, sometimes we have too many white flies, and we have the yellow strips, the adhesive strips, and the white fly flies against the adhesive strip, so we can catch them without using any chemicals. So they're not sprayed. But what about wasting energy, caused by the lamps, for instance? This waste, of course, also has to do with the fact that we all want to buy tomatoes all year round. But Dutch farms do their best to save energy. Virtually all of them have generators like this. Using internal turbines, they generate electricity. This energy is needed to light the huge greenhouses. And the plants need this special light to live. The farms sell most of the electricity to the Dutch power companies. This is how they recoup their energy costs. 25% of the electricity in Holland is generated by farms. This produces two waste products, heat and CO2. The waste heat is channeled through these metal pipes to heat the greenhouses. The waste gas CO2 is directed to the plants through such plastic tubes. They need it for photosynthesis. The plants convert the exhaust gas into oxygen. It's a huge amount of work that Jos is putting in here. Is it all worth it? Because the most important question is, do the tomatoes taste better than they used to? Dutch tomatoes have changed totally in the last 15 years. The taste is really wonderful. Maybe you want to come and try one. So, Arthur? Yeah, it tastes very good, in fact. Young vegetables are not really my thing, but this tastes very good already. Jos was able to convince our critical sound engineer, Artur. But why do they taste better? Their work is the main reason. Unlike in the past, the tomatoes are no longer harvested when they're green, but red. So, the vegetables ripen on the plant and you can taste it. In the past, supermarkets paid Dutch growers more money for green tomatoes because they lasted longer on the shelves, but that's changed. And there is another reason for the improvement in taste. We have new tomatoes, we have new varieties. They've been crossbred by the grafting companies and the flavour is back. New varieties, better flavour. All well and good. But what about the working conditions? Do people here slave away for a pittance? No, the harvest workers are not seasonal workers, as it is often the case in Germany. Almost all of them are employed on a permanent basis throughout the year. We in Holland have had a minimum wage for years. 
and we pay around seven and a half, eight euros net per hour. In Germany, yes, there's still a debate, but we pay by the hour and not by the kilo. And that means for the employees, no piecework, but a secure fixed salary plus social benefits. From the warm greenhouses, the tomatoes go to the cool packing sheds. These employees sort out any that are bad or crushed. These mini tomatoes represent a new food trend. Nowadays, tomatoes are hardly ever used to cook or prepare a salad. They are used as a snack in between, from hand to mouth. The snack vegetables are no longer washed here, which explains the strict hygiene regulations for all employees. If the tomatoes were packed into the bags or plastic containers slightly moist, they would quickly become moldy. By the way, the snack tomatoes for Germany's largest discounter are packed in these bags. The snack tomatoes for more expensive supermarkets go into more noble-looking beakers. In all possible shades of color. Our conclusion? Even if the production of the tomatoes has not much to do with nature anymore, the cliché of the tasteless Dutch tomatoes is long outdated. They are clearly better than their reputation. Vegetable pralines rather than water bombs. <laughs>